Hey everybody, I'm Tyler Weissong. Thanks so much for checking out my channel today. Today I wanna to go ahead and just jump right in. I heard this quote from Jim Rohn. It goes like this, don't spend major time on minor things. Wow, that is huge for life, but for singing. And when you're working on your voice, it's so easy to get caught up in thinking you're getting a lot of stuff done because you're just busy. But there's a difference of being busy and just running through things mindlessly, or maybe even things you don't need to be doing, versus actually being productive and getting real results. If you feel like you need to kick it back into gear and start getting some real results, I think what I'm about to show you is going to be helpful. So in this thought of spending major time on minor things, or what is actual, what are major things? Well, when it comes to vocal technique, something that I think is a major is learning registration, even registration from the bottom of your voice, your chest voice, to the top of your voice. And just having a chest voice, ah, having a head voice, whoop, and having a mix, ah, being able to do these three things. Now, I'm going to show you something here. And by the way, really quick, I, I think it's so important in the voice world to start giving credit where credit is due. There's nothing new under the sun. And I think a lot of us voice teachers, myself, I'll talk about myself here. I stand on the shoulders of the giants who have gone before me, no doubt. So what, what I'm about to share with you is something I learned from Ken Bozeman, who I just love so much. I've had a, the pleasure of being able to work with him a few times. And of course, I love his books and his information. If you haven't heard of him, check him out. He's amazing. This idea of something that is a major invoice is registration. Well, here is an approach that you can start using to build that evenness of registration and ultimately your mixed voice. I think it's important to mention that many roads lead to Rome. And so there's lots of things that you can be doing. And I'm assuming that a lot of you are probably doing something, whether that's going through a method of someone's, a course, or taking private lessons with a voice teacher. Here's just like some nuggets of information that you can start applying to whatever you're doing. I think the biggest thing in developing evenness and registration, and ultimately your mixed voice, is a stable vocal track. Here's the basics in two steps. Pick a shape, don't change that shape. Easier said than done. So here's a process though that you can do to pick a vowel shape and then not change it. What I want you to do, we're just going to start with ah, but if you drop your jaw, not to the point of biting into an apple, but just when your mouth just barely opens, which they call uh, translation right here, then with that, give me a pleasant expression right here. And you can, so, so with this pleasant expression, if you can actually feel like a sense of mischief or joy or uh, what it is is you can feel this like kind of grininess back here in this kind of soft palate area this kind of smile happening here we do this naturally when we're actually happy or you know we're about to see 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 loved one we haven't seen in a while or christmas day or fall and foliage whatever right we feel this kind of sense of joy and this grin and this position just say ya 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 right there that's my shape now what i do is just ya i'm not even going to open my mouth I'm not going to yaw like that. And when you keep this sense of grin throughout the whole slide, if you will, and of course you can do this on scales. Yaw, up, up, you know, or just yaw slides, whatever. You're keeping this vocal tract stability. Really, I'm trying my best to not move. I'm not being rigid, and I don't want you to be rigid and like, uh, hold anything. But you need to learn to keep this stability. Because, look, if, if I change the shape too much, this is what's going to happen. 
that right there, and we see that face sometimes, right? Going for high notes, ah, like, <laughs> like this. It's not going to benefit you in developing evenness of registration. If you want to do that a little bit, once you've mastered this, fine. Because you're trying to play around with the different timbre or tone quality, fine. My problem is, is when this over opening of the vowel that doesn't need to be open in terms of developing evenness of registration is we become dependent on that in order to hit the pitch and that is not necessary we should be able to just pick a shape and yeah yeah now when you do this the when you when you figure out how to keep this vocal tract stable nothing's depressing nothing's raising the mouth isn't moving around then your resonance or your sensation of vibration feels like it moves it feels like it goes up vertically and it feels like it goes straight up through your head uh, and sometimes even above your head, depending on how high you sing, as opposed to when you change the shape, even just a little bit, yeah, it's not a horrible sound, but it didn't follow the same path. It felt like it went ah, uh, kind of out that way, and I feel like I had to tilt my head back in order to do that. But if I yeah, 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 you know, like if you're just yeah. Kind of, you know, if you're just being a little bit more genuine or it's almost like there's a conviction that you can feel when you have this, yeah, yeah, that type of, it just feels more honest, at least to me, than going, yeah, that feels strange to me. It feels like I'm trying to manipulate something in order to hit a pitch instead of just allowing my vocal cords to do the work. And there's so many paradoxes going on here because when you allow your vocal cords to do the work, you don't really feel them working. <laughs> but when you try to manipulate things, then you do, you start to feel this tension here. The other paradox is when you keep the shape the same, then the sound seems to move. When you don't keep the shape the same, then the sound doesn't seem to move. Interesting. If you're having a real hard time with like, man, no matter what I'm doing, my mouth is opening or my larynx is raising. And you know what? For a lot of you, this takes some deep self-awareness. Like it took me forever to realize that I was even just going, yeah, opening my mouth, you know, without a mirror or without putting my finger in my mouth. So this is the first thing you can do. First, if it's an ah vowel, I'll mention here, if you're doing E or U, those vowels don't follow this. <laughs> uh, those will actually modify, and I'm going to save those for another video. But ah, oh, oh, eh, eh, they hardly open at all. So, but what you can do, especially for this ah vowel, because it has such a high first resonance of the vocal tract or first formant, is you can put your finger in your mouth. And I don't want you to like feel like you're holding your jaw, but just gently. Ah, 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 ah. And I, I, I don't have to move, open my mouth to hit that pitch. I just don't have to. So that's something you can play with. Uh, and if you're have if you feel like your larynx is just getting really tight and jammed up, here, something you can do is take your hands on the top of your sternum here and just gently pull down, because the muscles that pull your larynx down, uh, some of them at least, connect right into here, and so you can kind of tug on those a little bit by pulling on the skin here, on the skin here. Uh Okay, and even there, that's a C sharp, I really don't have to open my mouth much at all. And when I do that, again, on that top pitch, I feel the sound go up. It's, a, it's an imagery, it's my imagery that I 
uh, perceived to be real. And look, you need to develop imageries. You must develop what the book Peak, which is a brilliant book, talks about as mental structures. Some of the greatest performers in chess, tennis, you guessed it, singing, and basically anything, develop these kind of bizarre, these these kind of out there mental structures on, on how they're perceiving what it is they're doing. Very important. It may take time and they will change as time goes on, but don't discredit the images that come into your mind, your mind's eye, when you're actually doing these things. Start to memorize those. Those are really important and able to recall a, the same technique. You know, Franco Corelli said one time, the hardest thing about being Franco Corelli is that you have to sing like him every night. <laughs> I mean, and that's such a thing to think about. We could substitute that for Bruno Mars. The hardest thing about being Bruno Mars is you got to sing like him every night. You perform. That's tough. So you have to have these ways of getting back to the way to, to singing with your best technique and your best ability to perform. As a recap, choose the shape. Don't change the shape. <laughs> this is something, this is such a major that you need to really start working on. If you can do this, the three things are going to migrate. The vowel shape will seem to migrate. It will, depending on the vowel, of course. But if you're singing ah, it will sound like uh at, in the middle and maybe even uh as you keep going higher. Ah, ya, ah, but not ya. You don't have to open and try to make it sound ah the whole time. Because consequently, if you do that, you're actually changing the shape. The affect can change. Down low, there's several affects like sternness or complaining to get this kind of chest voice buzz. Um, you know, and as you go up higher, it might turn more into something like crying or sobbing. Okay. And then third, the buzz quality, if you will, that light buzz will migrate as well on the bottom uh it's gonna be kind of coarse as you go higher uh, it's just not as coarse the quality of that buzziness changes it's a little more smooth and refined so i know that this is maybe a lot for some of you or for some of you you might be like yeah i know i've read these books i've seen this stuff so maybe this is just a great refresher wherever you're at let's just remember to spend major time on major things that's how you're going to continue to get the voice that you want a voice with freedom power and lots of range be working on these things be spending your time wisely and get back to work Come on, nobody's gonna do your push-ups for you. You gotta do them. So I hope you like this video and I really sincerely hope that it helps a ton of you out there. If you did like this, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe to my channel because I got a bunch more videos like this coming very soon. Until next time.